Hi, my name's Libby, and I really like books. I'm new to the booktube community, and I think it's amazing. And so I wanted to bring you guys my top 10 favorite reads of 2017. So the first book that I want to talk to you guys about, it is uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's Jir Ijewele, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions. This very short, tiny, little, beautiful book, basically, uh, this woman, Chimamanda, she received a letter from her friend, Ijewele, who has a daughter, and she's asking Chimamanda's uh, advice on how to best raise her daughter in like a modern feminist way. And so in real life, Tim Amanda responded to this request with these 15 suggestions. And it reads really beautifully because it's literally like reading advice from a friend because, because you are. And if you kind of want to know just quickly right off the bat what they are, um, if you look at the back of the book, um, it actually tells you all the like really short chapters kind of because that's what she's talking about and and so you can just get an idea for yourself of like what she's kind of describing and um, when I first read this I, I loved it and so I lent it to one of my very best friends and the first thing she said about it was this is probably the most important book that I'll ever read and I was like yeah I know! And um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Definitely recommend. Uh, the second book I'm going to talk about, this is a copy of Jack London's White Fang. This is my dad's copy from when he was in elementary school in 1965. It was really important for me to read this particular copy because my dad, it's his favorite book. The main characters of the book are animals. There are people also in the book, but the main your main perspective comes from you as, I'll say more than one different animal. Um, and it's fantastic. And it's winter. And so it's a great time to read White Fang. The next read probably isn't popular on booktube at the moment. Um, but this book absolutely blew my mind this year and it is Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. Now, this book is huge. <laughs> it is a beast. And I actually did listen to the audio book, which was like 50 hours of audio. It was so long. Um, but I enjoyed pretty much every second of that audio, and I loved it so much that I bought the book, and I would absolutely reread it. I, I didn't really expect very much out of it. I think I decided to listen to the audiobook because it was so long and I wanted something to take up time while I was on the bus. But this was incredible, you. It was incredible. I don't know what to... Um, I'm trying to think of what's the most important thing to say about it. Ken Follett, prior to writing this book, like back in the 80s, he only wrote um, like spy mystery novels, which are apparently also really good, but obviously very different from this one. Um, and he had this like crazy burning passion about cathedrals in England. And it took him like 10 years to write this. And uh, he just like went on a, a limb with his passion about cathedrals. And this, and this book, if I didn't tell you already, or if you didn't know, it is about the building of a cathedral in medieval times in England. And it's so action-packed. Um, there are strong female characters. Uh, there's like the villains and the heroes and the anti-heroes. And there's like romance and violence and like, it's just so jam-packed full of awesomeness. I, I was very shocked at how much I really, really loved it. And um, yeah, I've been rambling on about this one for kind of a long time now, so read it. This next one here is definitely one of the booktube hyped favorites, and that is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. And it's just a really beautiful coming of age romance that was really cute. I think the reason this book is so good is that 
Rainbow Rowell really understands her characters. She, she really writes a very believable character and you just feel for them the whole time they're going through it and it really made me remember how it felt to be 15 years old. And that can be a good thing, that can be a bad thing, but in this case, it was really, really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, the next guy is another fabulous recommend from you guys at BookTube, and it is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. Um, multiple people on BookTube have talked about this book, and it's great. Um, it is a graphic novel, so you can see it's got really pretty, cool, funky artwork that's in it. Um, and actually, it's funny because the... This dust jacket here. Um, the artwork that is on the cover itself is gorgeous, and it's it's weird because all these little things, like when you if you haven't read it, like these mushrooms and this tree, if you haven't read it yet, it doesn't really make any sense, and it kind of just looks like oh cute, cutesy artwork. But all of these things are actually really integral to the plot, like this dresser, like it's really important, and. Um, it's really funny, and you know, I flew through it in maybe a day or so, and uh, it has, you know, obviously the main character is a female, and she owns her own business, but she's not perfect, and there's kind of some witchier elements to the book, and I mean, I haven't read the Scott Pilgrim series yet, but it's written by the same guy, and I think I feel even more inclined to read those now after reading this one because it was fantastic and um, all around just like a positive hilarious and beautiful book to own I, I really enjoyed it you guys I, I gotta thank you for, to everyone who has gotten me back into reading graphic novels again this this was a good step in that direction all right uh, so the next book is the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. I love Neil Gaiman, you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this book is kind of a, a loose retelling-ish of The Jungle Book. But this one is a little bit spooky, ghosty, witchier. There is a child and something is trying to kill the child. And the child kind of escapes, but these ghosts and other various dead things in in the graveyard uh, like witness that and they take it upon themselves to raise and protect the child just like the wolves do in the jungle book they raise Mowgli but this is ghosts and it's so cute and it's kind of scary but it is like for children so it's not that scary and obviously it's very whimsically written because Neil Gaiman is amazing at writing and this uh my copy got a little bit damaged but this copy has some cool uh, illustrations throughout, so it was really fun to read. I, I read it during the month of October, and I highly recommend that because it was with the spooky vibes of Halloween and stuff, and, and I, I really enjoyed that. I liked it. And it is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, first, just let me... Look at how beautiful this book is. It is, like the night sky with the glowy tents and it's got this like really buttery uh, feeling and I, I love the size of it. I really love this copy of this book. Um, so anyway, uh, Station Eleven is a apocalyptic novel and I'm not usually a huge fan of apocalyptic novels. I feel like I've read a bunch of them and I'm kind of over it, you know, but this book really stayed with me. It, it is also a really unique way of telling the story. It takes place before the apocalypse, during like the panic of the apocalypse, and then also afterwards, like quite a few years afterwards. And it doesn't go in a linear timeline, like it, it jumps around between the different timelines of, of the occurrence and it also jumps around between different 
characters' points of view. And all the different characters are actually connected in one way or another. The other thing that is really unique about the story is that one of the characters is an artist and she creates uh, cartoon art which is also part of the story. Like you live inside of her, her artwork and it's so cool. Um, Emily St. John Mandel is Canadian and a lot of the settings in the book are Canadian. There, there is some American settings as well, but it was really cool to, to read about places I know. Also, uh, Emily St. John Mandel, she is from uh, this island uh, here in British Columbia called Denman Island, and she writes, she kind of writes like a fictionalized version of Denman Island in the book, and she calls it like Delano Island or Deliano or Delano Island. I can't remember, but but it was cool to to read about that and be like, oh yeah, I've totally been there. I I know where that is, and and so yeah, I guess I I got connected to the story, and it's just really beautifully and well written, and I recommend this book to all. It's fabulous. This next book absolutely blew me away. It is Autumn by Ali Smith. Um, this is another really beautiful copy of a book. I, I ordered this copy from uh, Amazon UK because, because look at it. Uh, the North American version is pretty too, but this one is better. Uh, it's like cloth bound and I'm super obsessed with this burnt orange color and rose gold painting. It's so pretty. Um, this is the first of Ali Smith's, it's not a series, it's like four installments. And I haven't read the second one yet, so I don't even know if the stories are related. Um, but I, I don't even care. And uh, I think this book was recommended to me by uh, Jen Campbell, who is amazing. I'm a huge fan. And um, what can I say about it? I don't really want to try and go into what the plot is about. I really enjoyed the experience of not knowing a ton of what was going on in the book. I just heard amazing praise about it and it looked really beautiful and I thought, okay, well, whatever, I'll go for it. And I recommend that experience for sure. I will say that it is very character driven. There are two main characters and there, there's other characters, um, but you, you follow these two characters and the relationship. And she wrote this in 2016, I believe, and it's very current. I think the goal of these books is to truly follow the seasons, like one year after the other. So I'm really excited to read the second one and I really recommend it. It really blew me away. It has really gorgeous, beautiful, metaphorical, poetic writing. And I, I can't wait to read more from Ali Smith. I, it's gorgeous, you guys, seriously. Um, I also want to say that uh, these books are in no particular order. I couldn't like order them because how it's impossible, um, except for the one. I did choose my number one read of 2017. And also, obviously, um, these books are not all books that were released in 2017. They're just the books that I myself read in 2017. Okay. And finally, my number one read of 2017. It is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I think that I will always remember 2017 as the year I fell in love with Neil Gaiman. Um, this was the first one that I read. I read the graveyard book second, not right after, but it was the second one. And uh, I, I actually listened to the audiobook version of this one also, and I loved it so much that I had to go buy it. And the audiobook version is narrated by Neil Gaiman himself. And if you haven't ever listened to Neil Gaiman talk, I recommend you do because he has a beautiful voice. <laughs> um, Neil Gaiman has this quote that is... Uh, I lived in books more than I lived anywhere else. And it, it isn't from the book, it's just like him talking. And I love this quote so much. I think they post it on Goodreads a lot. And for me, Neil Gaiman 
wrote this book to be lived in. I mean, a lot of the perspective of the novel is is from the perspective of an eight-year-old child. And it, it brought me back to being the eight-year-old child that I was. There's so many, just the way that he, well, the, the child's perspective is about his, his feelings and, and his confusion and his um, experience and you know how he's feeling at, at different moments. I'm just like, oh yeah, I remember but it's in a the best way possible and you get to you get to go along this this adventure with this kid but you're also the kid yourself in the book and it's so full of warmth and and it's it's really short like it's not going to take you that long whether you listen to it or read the book itself um and i am a huge fan of magical realism, if, if that's what you want to call this. It's the fantasy, magical realism. It's incredible. The magic that's in it, there isn't like, it's not like a deep, crazy, high fantasy. It can't be, it's so short. The magic in the book maybe isn't what you're expecting it to be, but just my advice is just to, to go with it and, and believe um, because it's fantastic. And it sort of warms my heart just thinking about it. So, so that, that is the one. That's my number one read. I highly recommend. Go read it. Okay, so there you have it. That is my top 10 favorite reads of 2017. Uh, if you liked any of the books as much as I did, comment down below. If you want to see more videos like this you can subscribe and i'm also gonna do the worst or most disappointing books of 2017 as well i don't think i have 10 but there are some so stick around and yeah thanks for watching